This gospel has a very interesting teaching. First, you must read it in context. Think about this. When Luke is shaping this gospel, the early church of Luke, the Christians, the followers of Jesus, are going through a great persecution. And if you wish to belong to the community of disciples, Jesus says, you will be persecuted. It was an era of persecution and great sacrifice, suffering and death to follow Jesus Christ. Therefore, the first 300 years of the followers of Jesus Christ were extraordinary times of growth, powerful, invincible followers of Jesus Christ invincible in the power of Jesus Christ, not in the power of the world. Ready to die. The one who is ready to die for a cause is invincible. And they were ready to die for Jesus, followers of Christ. In the year 313, Constantine became the emperor. And uh, tradition has it that the night before the great battle of the Milvian Bridge in Rome, which he won and he became the emperor, tradition has it that he saw a sign in the sky, a sign of the cross in the sky, and an inscription under it, in hoc signo vinci. In this sign you will conquer. And therefore he had the cross emblazoned on the shields of his soldiers in the army uh, for the great battle, and he won the battle. And that gave him some confidence in the Christian way of life. Um, however, he made Christianity shortly thereafter the official religion of the empire. Now, he wasn't entirely a religious man. His mother was Saint Helen, but he himself was not baptized until shortly before he died. However, he thought that Christianity was so powerful, so emerging, it would help to unify the empire. And actually, he called the Council of Nicaea in the year 325, and he presided over the council, you know, council of the church, world council of the church. But when uh, Constantine made Christianity the religion of the empire, there is no longer persecution in the empire. And now the church will grow, and the emperor has a palace, and the pope will get a palace, and the emperor has an army, and the pope will get an army, and the church will grow and will become very prosperous. And the more the church became prosperous, the more the church became corrupt. And the era of great sacrifice and the era of great suffering somehow was over. Now we will have great martyrs in the missionary world, but in the institutional setting, uh, a certain kind of corruption began to emerge when the institution began to grow and become powerful and become political. It's an interesting uh, reflection that somehow the seeds of faith, traditionally, are the blood of the martyrs. Blood of the martyrs, that's what gets the faith to grow. The sacrifices, the caring, not the power, not the glory, not the applause, not the size, not the wealth, but the, the suffering, the struggles, the... Uh, day-to-day -day, uh, hardships that people endure that lead them into a place where they surrender to the power of Jesus Christ, not the power of the world, not the power of money or wealth or the power of size, but the power of Jesus Christ. Therefore, when we look at this, uh, it tends to put into focus the certain sacrifices we have to make if we sanctify these and put them into 
some context of our discipleship with Jesus Christ, then somehow the sacrifices take on a different kind of meaning. The inconvenience, the struggles, the conflicts, whatever it is happens to us in our lives, place them into the context of discipleship in Jesus Christ, they will take on a new meaning. Instead of something that will burden us and weigh us down and discourage us, somehow they become a source of grace something that we can lift up uh, in the name of Jesus Christ and say, wow, maybe there is some meaning even in the sacrifices which are part of my life. And that's exactly what happens here with the early church. They said, we are followers of Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter. You can kill some of these people. We'll keep going. Um, you can torture us, but we will not give up. We're followers of the Lord. Amazing. In recent times, if you're given to some kind of contemplative reading, uh, silence, endo silence, very interesting. Um, interesting insight into the contemplative suffering of the missionary life. Let us pause now for a moment of prayer.